Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we have a topic for you that has been the subject of much discussion. Actually, I haven't really seen any discussion about it anywhere, but I was curious and since I was going to test it anyway, I figured I might as well bring you guys the results. So, we've all heard of easy overclocking utilities and, you know, buttons where you just press and you get like a one-touch overclock, but there are very few roundups out there of the overclocking utilities from the various motherboard manufacturers. So we set to take the brand new LGA 2011 X79 platform from Intel with boards from MSI, Gigabyte and ASUS and use each of their easy overclocking utilities to see how far we could push our 3930K 6 core processor from Intel without any effort whatsoever. So if you're new to overclocking, well, I guess I'll explain why you would want to overclock. Overclocking turns up your CPU speed, makes everything kind of go faster, but there is the risk of decreased stability. So what overclockers do is they manually turn up various settings on their machine, and then they test it with a stress application such as Linux or Prime95 to ensure that the CPU is still making all of its calculations correctly. And then you can also use temperature monitoring programs to ensure that the CPU isn't running so hot that it's going to dramatically reduce the lifespan of the processor. So the why is to go faster, but there's also a warning here. So you always want to be careful when you're overclocking. If you don't know what you're doing, manual overclocking can damage your hardware. So can auto overclocking. So I'm just throwing this warning out there. Be careful when you're overclocking. Although based on our experience with these easy overclocking utilities, they shouldn't be very likely to damage your hardware at all. And I would feel quite confident recommending even beginner users to go ahead and try them out. In the left corner with the blue and black and white and silver shorts, we have MSI. So MSI's overclocking utility is called OC Genie. OC Genie allows you to press this button right here. The OC Genie button, aptly named. And it will turn up your CPU. That's it. That's the whole thing. So MSI's OC Genie allows you to press the button on the bottom of the board before you boot it up as long as the feature is enabled in the BIOS, then it will automatically overclock your CPU a predetermined amount, which we will see in a moment. In the right corner, we've got Gigabyte with their aptly named OC button. Once again, very simple. On the back panel, in fact, this is even simpler than MSI because you don't have to reach inside your case to press the button. On the back panel, you press the OC button it depresses in slightly. It's going to light up when you boot up the system. So you want to do this while it's off, please. OK, you press the OC button. Boom, you're overclocked. It's done. And in the top corner, OK, I don't know what to call the last corner. But in the other corner, our last competitor is ASUS. Now, their utility is actually a software utility, although it can't quite be called software because ASUS, unlike their competitors, does have their TPU chip on the motherboard, which actually tests and then validates and then tests and then keeps pushing further and validating and then falls back once it fails in order to find the maximum overclock. So all you have to do is open up the AI Suite 2 software and press the button in there called Extreme and it will overclock your CPU as high as it goes. So that is the three contenders and that is how to use them with terrible, terrible, terrible voice work by me. Now, for our test bench, we have a couple of things that are really, really important. So in any overclocking endeavor, I always say, okay, well, you're going to need a high-end motherboard. We got that covered. We got three high-end motherboards here from the leading tier one motherboard manufacturers. You are also going to need decent memory. Okay, we've got that covered. We've got very decent memory, Kingston HyperX quad channel memory to be precise. Actually, I might as well turn the angle here so you guys can actually see what the hay I'm talking about. So we've got our quad channel memory configuration. In overclocking, it is always more stable and you are going to always achieve more speed by using fewer memory modules. So rather than loading this board up with eight DIMMs, we've kept it to four DIMMs in order to increase the speeds that our system will be capable of achieving. Now you're also going to need cooling. So we've gone with the Corsair H100, which is a dual 120 millimeter radiator cooled liquid cooling cooler unit. Okay, so basically it's a pre built liquid cooler with a dual 120 rad capable of very good performance. Okay, we've also got an OCZ 1250 watt 
uh, 80 plus gold ZX series power supply. And finally for our boot drive, although this doesn't affect the overclocking stability, we have an Intel 510 120 gig SSD. So the main parts that are going to affect your stability during an overclocking endeavor are going to be your CPU. Whether you get a good one or a bad one, you can check out our episode on the binning process in order to find out what exa exactly I mean by that. You want to have good quality RAM, good quality motherboard, good quality power supply, and last but not least, a cooler. Now remember, the 3930K and the 3960X actually do not include a cooler at all in the box. So you're going to want to go out and get something pretty good for yourself. I definitely recommend the Corsair H100. It is awesome. Awesome. Now, let's present some results here, shall we, folks? I am going to do the MSI results as well as the Gigabyte results at the same time for one simple reason, and that is that they were pretty much exactly the same. Okay, so both of these motherboards were able to achieve a stable overclock, that is Prime 95, 12 threads running, small FFT, very good, okay. But they were only able to achieve a 4.0 gigahertz overclock. So both MSI and Gigabyte have preordained that the 3930K, if you plug it into this board with the latest BIOS releases, is capable of 4 gigahertz. However, in our overclocking guide tutorial video about the X79 platform, LGA 2011, and these new 6-core processors, we were able to achieve 4.7 gigahertz on our CPU, which led me to believe that this CPU, even though it's not the Extreme Edition, is probably capable of more than 4 gigahertz. So, stay tuned with me here, guys. So, remember this, Gigabyte MSI, 4.0 gigahertz, stable overclock with the press of a button. Stay tuned for the ASUS results as well as the conclusion coming up shortly. Like now. Wait now. Now, in order to enable the ASUS auto overclocking feature, it was not as simple as pressing a hardware button. However, ASUS claims that using their TPU chip, theirs is an actual hardware-based overclocking solution, whereas the competition, in this case, Gigabyte and MSI, is using a pre-configured profile and then just a button to enable it. So we decided to put this to the test and we used the extreme button in the auto tuning Turbo V Evo module in the ASUS AI Suite 2. And we actually had it run through a few different restarts already. And here we are, it took about, you know, five, 10 minutes. We ended up with a 4.471 gigahertz final clock speed, which is, as ASUS helpfully points out, 39% overclock. Now, ASUS claims that their utility will actually vary depending on how well your CPU overclocks. Now, we haven't tested the stability yet, and that's something I'm very curious about because what you can see here is that rather than opting to adjust the multiplier like the other two competitors, ASUS has opted for QPI overclocking in spite of the fact that this is a K-series unlocked CPU. So we're going to go ahead and test the stability of this overclock. Hopefully it holds up like the other two did, and then we will be back with the final conclusion. Now I have to confess, my expectation for ASUS's TPU-powered auto overclocking was very, very low. Um, I was, based on previous experience with many different auto overclocking utilities, including ones that have worked this way, my previous experience led me to believe that it would not achieve a desirable overclock and it would probably not be stable. But I was delighted to be proven wrong because this auto, auto overclocking utility actually achieved up to, in a real world scenario, we're talking more than a 10% clock speed boost over its competitors, so a 471 megahertz improvement over the competition, which is, like I said, up to 10% in real world. It managed to be stable, and it only took about 5-10 minutes. So, in conclusion, if you buy an ASUS board, you throw a decent cooler on it, you throw some decent RAM in there, good power supply, you press the button, well, the software button, because it doesn't have a hardware button, although I'll take a software button that achieves better results over a hardware button that doesn't any day, you can expect a very significant overclock with your Sandy Bridge E LGA 2011 CPU. So thank you guys for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips. And if you're looking to do an easy overclock on your upcoming 2011 machine, hopefully you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe.